Welcome back to I Teach You Science. Today we're going to do some New York Earth and Space Science cluster question practice. So I found these cluster questions here. I'm just going to go through some. This might be like a multi-part series. This is just going to pretty much get you into the mindset of how to deal with these cluster questions. Now, mind you, I actually don't have an answer key for these cluster questions here that I found. So I'm just going to hopefully assume that I'm going to be right or at least on the right track. So here we go. It says base your answers to one through six on the information below and on your knowledge of Earth and space science. It says there's salt flats in Utah and there are unique landscape in the world known for a vast flat surface and reflective beauty. So I'm just going to start underlining some stuff in here. Salt flats, they're flat, um, they're a popular tourist destination. They've begun to shrink as a result of human activities, including the diversion of water, which means they're changing the direction of water for agriculture and industrial use, salt mining, and recreational activity, like racing motorcycles. These changes threaten the biodiversity of the area and raise questions about the sustainability of the region's ecosystems, as well as the accessibility to the natural resource itself. So essentially there's a map here and there's these salt flats and they're trying to preserve them and you know human impact is wrecking the area the salt flat preservation organization wants to design a simulation to help students understand how various factors affect the biodiversity and sustainability of the salt flats. so we're gonna do some type of simulation the research team provides this information here okay so we got the years here we're going from 20 uh, 2000 to 2023 as you could see, the rain amount is going generally down. Just marking this up. And then the surface area of the salt flat is going down. So that's bad. It's shrinking. The depth of the water in the area is dropping. And then the change in water depth from the previous year is going down by tenths of an inch. Okay, so to build the simulation, computer engineers start with an image of the area of the salt flats as it appeared in the year 2000, and they animate it to show the current rate of change. Okay, rate of change. They then place the sliders to increase or decrease the factors that contribute to the changes. The goal is for the simulated area to respond accurately when the factors are removed or added. So they're going to make this little computer simulation to pretty much show, like if you increase the area, uh, the precipitation, what would happen if you you know, go over a certain amount of years, what would happen to the depth and the square uh, miles of surface area, so on and so forth. Okay. So here's what they're going for. Great. So it says use the data table from table one and the formula to calculate the rate of change in the surface area of Bonville salt flats between 2000 and 2023. So they give you the formula. So we just have to get the numbers for 2000 and 2023 for the surface area. So we go up here, 2000, the surface area is 46, and 2023 is 26. So it's final minus initial. 26 is the 2023, and then 46 was 2000. And you're going to divide that by the number of years, which is 23 years. So we're just going to put that in our calculator. So we're going to go 26 minus 46, which is negative 20 divided by 23. So I'm getting negative 0 0.869. And that's going to be in square feet, I think, is the top unit, square miles per year. Now, normally rate of change in is positive, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to leave it how they they have it here. Um, if the change in surface area of the salt flats continues at this rate, how might this affect the sustainability of human activities and biodiversity? So it's shrinking. So how might this affect it? Everything's going to decrease. Um, so we would just say both would decrease. If the area is getting smaller, that's what it would be. 
which set of terms completely cor uh, correctly completes the explanation. So it says a continuous blank in surface area could lead to blank resources for humans. So this is a negative situation here. So we're going to go with a continuous decrease in surface area. Uh, so that's going to be two or three. So four is out. Could lead to reduced availability of human resources. So it's definitely not increasing available resources. This trend may also destroy the available habitats and therefore reduce the biodiversity in the area. So it's row three is the only words that make sense in those blanks. Another parameter to consider when developing a predictive simulation is where the simulation should end. The computer engineers want the simulation to have the ability to predict 20 years into the future. Okay. Based on the rate of change calculated in item one, what should the area of the salt flats be at the predictive limit of the simulation? So they want to go 20 years into the future. And they're saying that, well, we figured out it's 0.869 square miles per year. And it's going from 2023 to 2043. Would that be... 20 years into the future yeah so we're gonna lose 0 0.8 0 0.869 per year for 20 years so we're gonna lose se about 17 square miles and we are at in 2023 26 so if we take our ending 26 and we're gonna lose another 17 and you subtract those, we're going to be, in 20 years, we're going to be left with about 9 square miles. So that's going to be 2 for your closest answer there. 2B, what does this prediction indicate about the use of the natural resources? Well, everything's going to be worse. So natural resources are easily replaced? No. Natural resource will replenish or come back as time goes by? No. The salt flats will always be there to provide natural resources? Well, clearly not. They're going away. The resource use of the salt flats needs to be managed properly so that, you, yes, so that the resources will be available. That's what I would say. Which list correctly categorizes the factors directly affecting the size of the salt flats? So it's saying some of the factors are direct influences and some indirect influences and they want to us to organize that so here's your direct and indirect so the direct that we said in the graph was precipitation harvesting salts the motorcycle riding and the water diversion so all those are right they didn't say global temperature was direct so that's going to be out that might be indirect um Again, that's here. Human population growth, they did not talk about. And then that's also wrong. And then they didn't say greenhouse gases. So this is all right for list one, which means the other three are indirect. So list one is going to be your strongest list. Okay. Another piece of information to consider in the simulation is how the salt flats were initially formed and how they're maintained naturally. This information may influence what happens when the sliders on the simulation are adjusted. Image 3 shows the processes that form the salt flats. The salt flat has been maintained over the past 5,500 years through salt deposition from surface and groundwater sources. So it's saying there was water and rain, precipitation, and then there was deposits there. We have wind and erosion, sand deposited, and then the salt deposited. Okay. So it says consider the list of factors that affect the size of the salt flats and choose one to evaluate. Indicate how the simulation should change the size of the salt flat as that would go up and down. So we're going to pick one. Um, we're going to pick one of these. So let's... Oh, sorry, we're going to pick a direct. Right, did I read that right? Consider this that directly... Oh, from question three. Okay, so here. So we got to pick one of these, precipitation, salt harvesting, recreational misuse, and water diversion. So let's just pick like salt harvesting. That seems like the easiest one. So salt harvesting. If we increase the amount of salt harvesting, the salt flat is going to decrease in size. Uh, explanation, humans are removing resources 
and then if the, the harvesting is decreased, the salt flat will increase in size. Uh, resources have a chance to replenish slash are not used. So if we don't use them, it might grow back, but if we keep using it, it's not, it's going to be uh, decreasing constantly. All right, number five. One of the goals of the simulation is to understand how the factors influencing the changes to the area of the salt flats will impact local human populations. So generally what you should know is that humans um, thrive off the resources that are nearby. So if you're removing resources from them, it might actually cause humans to have to leave the area. So it says, which consequence of the loss of the Bonville salt flats will local populations face? So this is going to be going down, right? So it didn't say changes, in, probably not changing in the climate. Loss of unique ecosystem, probably, yeah. Extinction of certain species. Um, I mean, there's probably oh, native species. Maybe if you if you lose the home of the salt flat to some, that could be a possibility. Increase agricultural output, no. Increase fishing, no. Decrease tourism, yes. So I would say probably two, three, six are arguable correct answers the number three i'm kind of iffy about it's kind of weird i don't know um that much about the native species to be able to say if that's going to be true or not but i'm going to go with two three six all right number six based on the information used to develop the computer simulation which of the following practices would help preserve the bonville salt flats and maintain sustainability of human populations and biodiversity so we want to help preserve the salt flats. So we want things that are going to help bring human population, um, keep it there, and then increase biodiversity, which means like the amount of like different creatures there. Reducing salt harvesting, yeah, that would be good. Implement regulations on tourism, yeah, that would uh, make people. Uh, actually, I don't know about that one. Implementing regulation on tourism, would that help preserve the salt flat? Probably, yeah, because if there's less tourists in the area, they might not, like, destroy it as much. Increase promotion of tourist activities? No. Increase water diversion? No. Develop alternative water sources? Yeah, that means we don't have to worry about going over there. Introduce new species to the salt flat? Sure. That would increase biodiversity. So I would go with one, two, five, six. All right, so next, um, I guess we could probably, how long is this video? 15 minutes? All right, I think um, we're going to stop on this cluster for now, and then um, we'll keep doing this. If you like it, leave a comment. I can continue to do practice cluster questions like this. I'll just keep moving through this. If you like it, good luck on your test, and I'll catch you on the next one.